Welcome to the channel. In this video, we will take a very simple idea on the Jakarta Composite Index and see how a bit of quantitative thinking can transform a gut feeling approach into a consistent and repeatable trading rule. The goal is to understand not only whether a signal works, but how to evaluate it properly using data and risk analysis. Let's get started. Let's begin by looking at the Jakarta Composite Index over the last 15 years. The long-term direction is upward, but the journey is far from smooth. At one point, the index experienced a drawdown of more than 40% from its peak. When we talk about drawdowns, we are talking about real investor experience periods where portfolios fall significantly and it becomes emotionally difficult to decide whether to hold, sell, or add more. This is why systematic tools matter. Instead of relying on feelings during stressful market conditions, we can use data to guide decisions. The question we want to explore is simple. Can we participate in Indonesia's long-term growth while managing risk in a more structured, quantitative way? On this slide, we introduce a very simple trend-following idea, the 10-day and 50-day moving averages. When the 10-day average crosses above the 50-day average, traders call it a golden cross, which suggests short-term momentum is stronger than long-term momentum. When the 10-day average moves below the 50-day average, we get a death cross, which signals potential weakness. This method is not complex, and that is the point. Quantitative finance does not always start with advanced models. It starts with clear, transparent rules that can be tested. Instead of assuming this pattern works, we now ask the quant question. After these signals occur, what actually happens to returns? Using Python, we analyze every MA1050 signal from 2010 onward. For each golden cross, we calculate the return of the Jakarta Composite Index over the next 20 trading days. This gives us a distribution of outcomes, which we can visualize as a histogram. Wow! The results show that after Golden Cross signals, the average 20-day return is around positive 1.1%, and about 68% of the outcomes are positive. When we examine death cross periods, the distribution shifts lower, with a weaker average return and a lower hit rate. This does not tell us that Golden Crosses are magical. Instead, it shows how quant tools allow us to replace subjective impressions with actual probability distributions. The goal is not to guess the market direction, but to understand what typically happens after a specific rule triggers. Now, I don't want to stop at one arbitrary parameter. We should not rely on a single set of parameters. So the next step is to let Python test many combinations of fast and slow moving averages. To keep the results realistic, we add several constraints. We assume the strategy is long only. We also fix the holding period at 186 days after each golden cross, which prevents overtrading and ensures that the signal is designed for medium-term positioning. Now, finally, we require a minimum number of signals to avoid conclusions drawn from a single lucky trade. Each box in the heat map represents the average 186-day return after a golden cross for a given pair of moving averages. A clear cluster of stronger results appears in the 30-day to 40-day region. One robust combination emerging from this analysis is the 35 over 40 moving average pair. 
which produces an average forward return of around 6.9% with a hit rate above 82%. Here we compare the optimized MA3540 strategy to a simple buy and hold of the Jakarta Composite Index. The buy and hold path is shown in blue while the strategy is shown in orange using the 186 day holding rule. Over the full sample, the strategy generates approximately 0.37% of annual alpha relative to the index. That may sound small, but in institutional portfolios, a consistent edge of 0.37% per year is meaningful. More importantly, this outperformance comes from a fully transparent and statistically tested rule. Beyond return, we also evaluate risk. The strategy tends to experience shallower drawdowns, lower volatility, and a better risk-adjusted profile overall. In other words, the return improvement is supported by a smoother and more stable risk curve. This combination, moderate alpha with more controlled risk, is often more valuable than chasing high returns with no structure. This process highlights the importance of backtesting and optimization in quantitative finance, ensuring that our trading rules are robust and not merely a result of chance. If you enjoyed this kind of quant finance breakdown, starting from a simple idea, coding it in Python, and stress testing it with real market data, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.